Hello everyone and welcome to the pythonvest.com YouTube channel. Today we will talk about the micro indicators and their influence on stock market's growth. Uh, we will use uh, several data sources. First uh, and the largest data source is FRED database. Um, then we take some additional data from NASDAQ data for former Quandle and we use Stook to get uh, stats uh, um, on indexes. So here is the plan. We start from preparation work, we get uh, the data from different uh, data sources into a dictionary of um, individual time series. Then we add transformations uh, to, to the data sources. Um, in many cases it will be a growth starts day to day, week over week, month over month or year over year. Then we join all data series into one data frame. The problem here is that they all have different periodicity um, and um, it is um, quite hard to get them all together. And with this one data frame, we will do uh, the correlation analysis and try to understand uh, the uh, the correlation between uh, stock market's growth and um, different metrics. And finally, we will look at the decision tree uh, to uh, get a marginal impact of uh, individual factors um, and uh, rank those factors accordingly. So here is uh, an introductionary video. You can see the detailed article um, by going um, to this um, web address. Uh, you can also read some um, articles um, about the stock markets uh, and macroeconomics, um, popular economic charts on FRED um, and full description of metrics. Or you can just use uh, this call up and see all metrics that I've uh, selected. So here is the uh, installation of libraries and uh, import, usual libraries like Quandle and Y Finance. Um, then we get all the data from the data sources. You can see that uh, here is an array of indicators which is separated into several um, groups. Uh, those indicators are about growth, like GDP, prices and inflation, like CPI, consumer price index, uh, money supply, like uh, monetary uh, velocity, M1V and some others, interest rates, so there are plenty of um, normally uh, daily interest rates uh, that can be connected with stock markets growth then employment um, most of all it's unemployment rate but also some other metrics uh, income and expenditure uh, household income um, like a share of um, um, obligations uh, financial obligations in the household in, in, uh, income and some other indicators um, so we add um, stats like blockchain, uh, US Treasury yield and uh, uh, gold prices and P ratio uh, from Quandal and we get uh, Stuck um, stats from um, index stats from Stuck. Uh, we also need to have um, the mapping between each indicator name and uh, how often it is updated, like quarterly, monthly, daily or weekly, um, just to be able to uh, generate growth uh, stats. So here is uh, the uh, first uh, part where we download all stats into the macro indicators uh, dictionary. So as you can see, macro indicators GDP. Um, it is a quarterly time series in absolute terms. Um, then we have um, another um, data source, Quandle indicators, and we add uh, to the same dictionary. So overall we have 65 uh, different indicators here. Uh, 
Um, okay, so here is uh, the visual representation of some of the indicators, S&P 500, this is a proxy for, for the stock markets or the Jones index. Um, then some of the time series um, like gold ETF volatility or uh, VIX uh, volatility index um, or uh, financial stress index. So uh, when we have all of that, uh, we start doing the transformations. Why do we need those transformations? First of all, if you have this um, series uh, that are growing all the time, um, it's very hard to get any prediction for the, um, for, the, for, for the metric that we want to predict. So like uh, if you train any model on some lower uh, values of index of uh, metrics, any model won't know what to predict in future because inputs for, the, for, for those features would be uh, higher than any of the previous inputs previously. So that's why we convert uh, many of absolute uh, metrics um, to uh, relative stats like uh, daily, weekly, monthly or yearly growth. Um, so here is the function to convert that. Um, you can check that later. Uh, we also generate some uh, indicators like dividend ratio. If we know um, the amount of dividends uh, that were paid um, by companies and the amount of corporate profits, uh, we divide one to another and we will have the dividend ratio. Um, so now we, uh, we have uh, um, metrics, we have a set of data frames like this. It used to be only gold's price, for example, here um, in, a, in a dictionary macro indicators, uh, LBMA gold. But now on top of that, uh, there are other indicators like growth one day, three days, seven days, 30 days, 90 days, and 365 days. So uh, after the transformation phase, uh, you will see many more um, indicators and it will be about 165 indicators that is uh, uh, two and a half X more than it used to be. Uh, the next phase is to join everything into a one data frame. Uh, you can check this, this function, how to join that. Um, but the idea is that we take um, some um, daily stats like index um, stats and we join um, every other um, feature um, to, to this um, data frame and, uh, and join it one by one. So if feature uh, is a weekly updated feature, then we have uh, all um, um, week filled with the same value from the last uh, updated weekly stats. And the same is for monthly, quarterly and yearly. So the same value is propagated uh, to the daily stats. And also if the feature was not updated, uh, for example, the most recent um, day uh, or some features are updated uh, after one, two weeks or even one month, we will propagate the last available date, even uh, if the period is already finished and the feature should be updated. So we do not allow having now values in the data frame. So after doing all of that um, and joining um, everything to, to the one data frame, we will have uh, this uh, macro underscore df. This is a one um, data frame uh, that is a daily updated data frame with that many uh, features, 166 uh, features. And most of them, they are relative, as you can see from here, year over year, months over months, quarter over quarter. Uh, here, uh, the 
stats. Uh, so um, you can see for every day when uh, the market was open, we have um, the latest um, available uh, feature value for all columns. And now we are ready to do the analysis. Um, let's move to the correlation analysis. So if you uh, call this uh, method, uh, standard pandas method dot C-O-R-R, -R, you will get correlation of everything with everything. Um, you just need to, to know the correlations of all columns with SPX growth 365 days. So we want to understand uh, which features are correlated with the growth of S&P 500 index. And here you can see that uh, the least correlation uh, correlated in uh, features are financial stress index, uh, gold volatility um, feature, VIX, um, and some other um, features of uh, household um, obligations. The most positive uh, correlated features are um, man employed, indicator of production, uh, Schiller PE ratio, and of course, um, uh, Dow Jones index growth. So you can also check the same stats and compare um, features that are correlated with Dow Jones uh, growth 365 days. And you can see that they are very close numbers, which is a good sign that we have a robust prediction uh, of uh, correlations. Or you can try to find correlations with S&P 590 days growth, so it, uh, growth in one quarter or 30 days growth. So generally you will see different um, numbers, but uh, mostly it will be the same um, features. So the next idea is that um, this is good uh, to know that um, those macro indicators and um, stock prices are somehow correlated, but generally we want to predict what will happen in the future if we are doing some investments. So we can observe the latest um, uh, features, macro indicators, and we want to understand what will happen in, in the future. That's why we generate future indicators um, and they will be called like future growth, one day, three days, seven days, 90, 365 days. Um, and by knowing all the data, now we try to predict uh, future growth in 365 uh, days. We have special filter not to include other future indicators because it is obvious that future growth of 365 days will be most uh, mostly correlated with uh, the same future growth in 90 days or Dow Jones uh, index uh, future growth in 365 days. We are not very interested in this, uh, so we just want to see other correlations. So here you will have some other features uh, those numbers are generally low, so you won't see here 0.5 or 0.6 or 0.7 correlations. Um, and now you can see that negative correlation, uh, mostly it's some um, uh, rates or break-even inflation. Um, and for positive correlation, uh, you have things like safe rate, uh, more long-term macro indicators. So the same um, idea is to check for 90 days, for 30 days, and to see whether those uh, most and least correlated uh, features are the same. And uh, then um, we, we are approaching to the last section of our research. Um, so this is something uh, when you can predict some, uh, some growth uh, or you know uh, where to look at uh, and what macro indicators to follow and uh, that can influence um, stock markets. But um, all of those macro indicators, they are correlated between each other and um, you don't know the um, individual influence of each indicator. So probably uh, the, there are few 
features that influence most of all, um, but they are hidden somewhere in the middle here. So that's why we, we built a, a simple decision tree model. It's very approximate because uh, you can't predict um, the growth of stock markets by using only macroeconomic features, but it is something. So we are preparing uh, all, all the features. Uh, so uh, that's our um, X. Um, and uh, we have a uh, variable to, to predict why that is future growth 90 days. And when you build a, a decision tree, um, you can have the features importance. Um, and you will see that here um, there are like different features that are uh, the most important ones like dividend ratio or um, profits um, or uh, monetary uh, velocity quarter on quarter um, overall um, this shouldn't be treated as the la the the truth um, in the, in the last instance because the quality of um, of our model is not very high. If you check those uh, lines for actual um, growth of stock markets versus predicted, you can see that they are somehow moving into the same direction sometimes but they are not very close to each other so uh, it's up to you uh, what method to use um, just uh, simultaneous correlation analysis uh, future uh, metric correlation analysis or decision tree but you now you have several um, ways to to do the analysis and now you know how to get all of those um, features uh, into one data frame from a, a database and use it for any of your predictions. Thank you very much and um, see you again soon. Bye.